Okay, we take a look at item number one, and what is on item number one? If you guessed forceps, you are correct. Moving on to the next page. Page number two contains an item that we use to measure both units of centimeters and meters. If you guessed the metric ruler or meter stick, you are correct. That is item number two, meter stick. A little bit closer look, you can see centimeters. Opening up the next door behind door number three, we have in the blue arrow, the mortar and the red arrow, the pestle. Mortar and pestle. Open up the next window. What could this item be? If you guessed watch glass, you are correct. If you guessed the contact lens of a giant, you are incorrect. I'm sorry. That is the watch glass. Excellent work. Moving on to the next item. Next item we have here is a... Go ahead and take a guess. And if you guessed test tube holder, you are 100% correct. Hooray. Yes, well done. Excellent. Next item up. Moving on to the next page. This is a small glass or plastic rod sometimes used to guide liquids into a container. What could be the name of this item? If you guessed a stirring rod, you are absolutely correct. Give yourself a round of applause. Well done, stirring rod. Moving on to the next item. The next item that we have here is the... Of course, it has the round end or bottom part and the skinny top part. Uh, we refer to this as looking like a female with a bigger backside. And it's different from the Erlmeyer flask, so if you guessed Florence flask, give yourself a round of applause. Well done, well done. Moving on to the next item. What could this item be? We can see that it is used to measure temperature, and we can use degrees Celsius if you look closely. This item, if you guessed a thermometer, you are absolutely 100% correct. Give yourself a round of applause. Moving on to the next item. What could this item be? It's got circular holding devices, so it's some type of holding equipment. It also has a few uh, pedals to uh, possibly hold something. And if you guessed a test tube rack, give yourself one more round of applause. Moving on to the next one. What could this item be? It looks like a magnifying glass, and we use it to magnify objects, but in science, we actually refer to this item as the, you guessed it, simple microscope. Well done. Well done. Moving on to the next item. Hmm. What could it be? Some people have called it an eyedropper before, but we don't drop things in our eyes in science, so if you said eyedropper, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to drop the first word and simply call it a dropper. If you guess dropper, you are 100% correct. Way to go. Moving on to the next item. The next item we have, this is a unique device that will allow us to grow different types of uh, molds or have a closed environment for tiny or small experiments, making sure that nothing on the outside can interfere with the controlled experiment taking place on the inside. What could this item be? If you guessed a Petri dish, give yourself another round of applause. That one's just for you. Moving on to the next item. The next item we have is very small, similar to the eyedropper. Might even be a cousin or relative of some sort. This is actually a dropper 
that is used to drop even smaller amounts of liquid onto a particular surface or in some type of lab experiment. We call this one the... You got it! The pipette is correct! Way to go! Moving on to the next item. This item, notice the rubber ends will allow it to grip something that is glass or metal firmly without dropping it. If you guessed the, beaker tongs is correct! And we have a, let's see here. Well, the bear was going to cheer for you, but evidently he's not in a cheering mood. Moving on to the next item. Next item we have here, very similar, possibly a relative of the beaker tongs, is simply his great-great-grandfather, the... Tongs! If you guess tongs, give yourself a round of applause and a little toot on the horn. Moving on to the next item. And the next item we have here is something that we could place inside of the... Yes. Yes, that is correct. The test tube rack, and we call this a test tube. Give yourself another round of applause. Moving on to the next item. Page number 19 holds the item seems to be some type of device that has a gas valve down here and a flame that would come up down here and a tube that would go all the way to a gas type opening. We would call this item, yes, that's correct, the Bunsen burner. Give yourself a round of applause, or, well, maybe the elephants want to cheer for you. Way to go. Moving on to the next item. This next item is, can you guess it? Think hard. Sometimes we use it to measure volume using uh, milliliters, ml, or even cubic centimeters for other objects. Milliliters would be for liquid cubic centimeters for solid objects. If you guessed graduated cylinder, go ahead and give yourself another round of applause. Well done. <clears throat> Next item, what could it be? This looks like a tie, and it is some type of flask. Perhaps he's related to Florence, and we call this the Earl Meyer flask. Earl Meyer flask. Excellent job. What could the next item be? Can you guess it? Think hard. Yes, that is correct. It is a ring stand. Well done. Ring stand. Give yourself a round of applause. Moving on to the next item. We have three different sizes. The small, 50 milliliter. The medium, 200 milliliter, and the large, 500 milliliter. And if you guessed, yes, beaker would be the correct answer. Excellent job, beaker. Moving on to number 24. This is an item that perhaps you've seen or used before to get a liquid from a large container into a much smaller container of some sort. And we do call this item the... Funnel is correct. Well done. Oh, you've all seen this one. Read a page on it, SR-47 in your textbook, and you will know this to be the device used to magnify very small things, and we call it a microscope is correct. Well done. What could the next one be? Right here we have something that appears to have one not two, but three beams on it. And this is a device we use to measure mass. It could be measured in grams or even kilograms using the metric system that we use in science. This device is called the triple beam balance. Well done. And one of the final items that we have, we actually have two of them. First, we have this tiny little square device, which will actually be something that we use on this device. This device right here is a small piece of glass that's placed underneath a microscope, and you might know it as the 
microscope slide is correct well done and of course before you can place it under there you want to cover the specimen up so that it does not get on the lens of the microscope with this device if you guessed cover slip give yourself a pat on the back excellent job moving on to the next and final page the scientific method what could be the order of the scientific method? Put these in order. Is it form a hypothesis? State the question and ask a question. Collect information. Do background research. Record, study, and analyze data. <clears throat> Test the hypothesis with an experiment. Report results or draw a conclusion. Which comes first? If you guessed ask a question, you are 100% correct. We have to start with a question. Why is a rainbow the way it is? How does the rear end posi track on a Plymouth work? It just does. Start with a question. After that, the next step should be to collect the information, the background, or research to help you form the next step, which is... Yes, a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a guess based on prior knowledge and research. So you need to research before forming a hypothesis. What do you do after the hypothesis? If you guessed to set up a procedure in a list of materials, you are correct. But that one is not listed here, so we're going to have to move on to the next step, which would be to actually test that hypothesis with an experiment make sure that you are controlling everything with keeping it constant uh, except for one changing variable that one changing variable of course is the variable that you're testing if it is the changing variable it would be known as the independent variable now, if that independent variable actually changes a type of uh, a distance or some other variable, we call that other variable a dependent variable. Now, moving on to the next step. After testing the hypothesis, we need to make sure during the experiment that we're also recording and studying the data. And then, when the experiment's completely over, we can actually analyze it. So this one is already in its correct location. The next step would be to... Oh, of course, after you've analyzed the data, you need to draw some type of conclusion. Figure out exactly what you can learn from your experiment. And finally, you need to report those results some way, shape, or form, report them, either on a poster board or even publishing them on the internet. Thank you for joining me on Mr. Brescher's Science.